In the last video, we learned how to uh, put data into a data set in Logger Pro, and then how to make a graph of the data, and ultimately how to print it. When you get a graph that looks like this, you've learned in this class that if you want to come up with a mathematical model to describe it, that you are going to go through a process that we sometimes call linearization. And in this case, we learned that for this thing that looks like it might be a top opening parabola, we're going to want to generate a test plot to see whether or not that really is a top opening parabola. What we learned that learned to do was to square the quantity on the horizontal axis because clearly the position in this case is increasing more quickly than the clock reading is. So perhaps squaring clock reading might get it to keep up. So if we go back to the data set, the data table for the wheel and axle on the low incline, we can add a column. And we're going to go up here to the data menu and select new calculated column. The reason we're selecting calculated column is we're going to be calculating the clock reading squared by squaring the clock reading column. So if we select new calculated column, we're going to get this dialog box. And this new calculated column we're going to want to call clock reading squared. Now we could type out squared. We can also come over here and we've got this option to put a superscript of 2. And it looks like I selected subscript. So let's change that to superscript of 2. And I'll get rid of the subscript that I put in there. And the short name is going to be clock reading, as for, for clock reading is T, and we want to also square that. And the units for that, since our clock reading was in seconds, our clock reading squared ought to be in seconds squared. Now, all this is doing is naming the column. So what you also have to do is to type in an expression for what? calculations are going to be done to come up with the square of the clock reading. So if you click here, you're going to have each of the columns that has been defined is going to show up in the variables column. And I'm going to choose clock reading. It'll put that up here in parentheses, indicating this the variable called clock reading. And then we're going to use the caret, the shift six, to tell it that we want to raise that to the power of two. Um, we're going to also want to come over here and choose empty circle and black and displayed precision. Let's go to the um, nearest tenth of a second squared. When we click on that and hit done, there it is. Our clock reading squared column is created for us. All We've got the heading for that, t squared and second squared, and we've got all of the values, one, 0 through 6, have been squared in this column. And again, if I were to make this wider, it would say clock reading squared. You can decide whether you, you're good with the symbol or the full name. Now, once we've done that, we don't want to lose this position versus clock reading graph, but we are going to want to plot the graph of position versus clock reading squared. So I'm going to go to the position versus clock reading graph I'm going to go to Page, Add a Page, and this time there are a lot of settings I like from the previous one, so I'm going to tell it to copy the current page. What it's going to put is the same graph on page 3. And note that right now it says page 2 up there. I'm going to put in page 3, after the current page, the identical graph. So now it says page 3, and you see I have the same position versus clock reading graph. But this time, I'm going to change this to clock reading squared. And I'm going to see if I can get rid of this thing. I'm going to have to ignore this for right now because I should have gotten rid of that before I started it. Actually, let's just go back and instead of doing what we did before, we're going to go to page, add a page, and we're going to do another blank page. When we do this blank page, we're going to want to insert a graph. And you'll notice that it just chooses some graph, which in this case is 
kind of meaningless clock reading squared versus clock reading. And, but what we want is a position versus clock reading squared graph. So if I come over here to where it says clock reading squared and click on it, I can choose one of these variables or I can click on more and then it'll let me unclick clock reading squared and click on position. And now it's a position versus clock reading graph. That's the same graph we had before. It's not what we want. If we click on this and say more, it will let us choose whatever variable we want that's already been defined. In this case, we want clock reading squared. When we do it, it looks like we've gotten a linear graph. We're going to want to go to graph options. We're going to want to title this graph, which is going to be position versus clock reading squared. So we're going to go same thing over here. We've got the little superscript for the squared. Black looks good. Point symbols looks good. See, it's kind of defaulting to what we have done before. We go to axes options. We want to auto scale from zero and auto scale from zero here. Everything looks good. We're going to click. And we now have a position versus clock reading squared graph. Now you'll notice that the data appeared to be linear. We could do a curve fit and choose a linear curve fit, but we can also just use this linear fit setup. Now, unlike the last time, I'm going to allow you to keep this little dialog box up here because it tells you what the value is of the slope that is calculated and also what the value of the y-intercept is. It also tells you that this is a linear fit for the wheel and axle low incline for this particular position versus clock reading squared graph. You'll see why that's important in a little bit. So when you get ready to do your mathematical analysis for this particular graph, the one, all the parts will be exactly the same as what you've normally done, but the one thing that will change is that you won't have to actually plug in numbers to get the slope. So you'll be allowed to write down after you've define symbolically the slope, you'll be able to insert the value of the slope, which in this case is 5.00 meters per second squared. So that's how we go from our original data table, add a column, and then add a new graph that plots two different variables.